That's why they put red and blue and gray and gold and gray and that's not their natural color. Blonde is not their natural color, but they want to look like who? Whose natural color is blonde hair? The white girl. She want to look like Becky. Right. Right? Envy thou not the oppressor. Come on. And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. Right? I'm going to get some other laws for you just so we can speed it along. Because you got some basics. Good. But now we want to build upon that. Right? Give me Leviticus uh, 21 and 5. Gotcha. All right? I'm going to show you something else that you may not know. Because there's more than just the Ten Commandments. Right? You got to remember the Ten Commandments are a summary of all the commandments. The only commandments we don't have to continue to, for, to actually do are the sacrificial laws. That's what that black man over there did for us. He came and died for us. That black man over there. Right? Not that white guy right there, but that black man over there. Right. All right, read that. Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. Read this. They shall not make baldness upon their heads. Uh, not make baldness upon their head. We right here, we're by a military base. You're going to find a lot of brothers, Israelites, they just don't know it, with shaved bald heads. That's a law. It says thou shalt not make now, there's no suggestions. That's a law. It says don't do it. Watch this though. Read. Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. They shall what? Neither shall they shave off the corners of their beard. Justin, you may not have known that. But shaving your face is also against God's commandments. You might not have known that. So that's why I asked you the question so that we can start building and you can start applying those other laws that you may not have known. You know why? Because when you see a man with a beard, you know that's a grown man. Right? When you look at a lion, you know a fully grown lion by the mane on his head. And you know a female lion because there's no mane on the head. Right. Your, your beard is a badge of manly dignity. Manly dignity. Right? So when people see you, they should know something's different about you. Because you're going to carry yourself a little bit different than the world says you should. Give me Numbers 1538. Did you know that there's a dress code for the children of Israel? Bruh. You can't tell me you know it and you ain't doing it. You can't, you're telling me you know, but you're not doing it. That means, that means what? What, what? what are you saying? What are you saying? Do you not believe that, that it's important or what? What's up? Why, why, what, what, why you ain't applying the commandments that you already know? Tell me why. You know you ain't going to come up with no good reason. Come on. You really trying for a reason? Okay, okay. Okay. Ah, to do away with the laws? Okay, okay. He made up suggestions? Ah, yes, 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 yes. So, we should just say to hell with it and do what we want to do? No, no, okay, so what should but, we do? But, Give me First Peter chapter 3. I'm, I'm, I'm asking you a question. I'm asking you a question. My question is, if, if Jesus came, does that mean now that we don't have to keep any commandments, we just do what we want to do and it don't matter because the law is done away with, right? No. Oh, you said, but you're saying no. So, okay, so I agree with you. The law is not done away with. Okay, so we have to do the law. Okay, we're on the same page. Okay. But in the Old Testament. Uh-huh. You would die. Of course. And for certain sins. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. I'm with you. But Under Jesus. Jesus almost gives you like a, like a delayed. What's that called? What's that called? You're right. I'm with you. It's called grace. It's called grace. But in a grace period, do you not have to do or fulfill the agreement so so you it's it's giving you a time to correct. to correct it so during the time of correction you should be applying so it doesn't mean that you don't have to do it right okay i know you're following you've heard this before i can tell read that what, what do you want? um I'll leave us an example okay say it one more time um uh, Oh, uh, two, 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 two. I'm sorry. Two and. We're, we're say um, uh, doing um, leaving us an example. Did no guile in his mouth. Second Peter two. Huh? Yes. Two and twenty. Try that one. It's the book of First Peter, chapter two, 
and verse. What's three. up, bro? Okay, okay, okay. I just want you. You got a flyer, right? All right. You live out here? Okay. You at Schofield? Okay. You live out here. So, before you leave, bro, I need you to make sure. Matter of fact, you should uh, follow our page and you should come learn with your brothers. We're in Pearl City, not far. All right. You should come learn with your brothers because you got the you got the baseline knowledge. You, you answering the questions correct, but you're not applying them. You answering correct, but you're not applying them. So what good is it going to do you in judgment if you if Jesus asked you a question? Is he going to ask you, do you know what to do or did you do it? Did you do it? Right. Give me uh, Romans two thirteen. Give me Romans two thirteen. I want to share this with you. Drop that, Peter. Don't worry about that, Peter. Huh? Get it. It's the book of Romans, chapter two and verse thirteen. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. You hear that? You hear that, Justin? Right? You you heard that? Read it again. For not the hearers of the law are just before God. Come on. But the doers of the law shall be justified. You gotta do the law. Give me Numbers fifteen thirty-eight. It's of no use. You can't just be a talker and not a doer. You know what that's called, right? When you say when you say you're about something but you don't do it, you know what that's called? Yeah, what's another word? You know it because you heard this one. It's a very famous word. It starts with an H. A hypocrite. You a hypocrite, right? I know we should be keeping the commandments. I know what I should be doing, but I ain't doing it. You a hypocrite or you just got the devil on you? One or the, one or the other, all right? All right? All right, but you not so, brother, you out here agreeing with everything. So now you at a point right now where the Lord is calling out to you. Either you're going to answer or you're going to start walking into a dangerous place because you know what to do. You know what comes after knowing what to do and not doing it? Judgment. That's what comes next. Judgment, right? And it don't always have to be a thunderbolt from heaven. It could just be a car jumping this curb and hitting you. I'm just saying, oh, God forbid. I'm just giving you an example. No, 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 no. Ch -ch 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 -ch. I'm, that's just an example. That's just an example, right? Right? So playing with God. What would you get? He said numbers. Yeah, 1538. Read that. Numbers chapter 15 and verse 38. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Read. Throughout their generation. So we still generating. You see all the brothers up here, we got fringes on our garments. But see, I know I know I know one of the big issues is that brothers be feeling kind of weird if they're the only ones that know some information. So they kind of feel weird if they start doing it by themselves, right? I know, I know, I get it, I get it. But the Lord is showing you that you got brothers out here. So now that excuse is out the window. Because now you know for a fact you got brothers out here that know what you know. And know that we should be applying the commandments of God. So it shouldn't be no excuse of, I, I didn't want to be by myself. I didn't want to stand out by myself. Because you got brothers that's been doing it longer than you that can show you not only how to do it, but are willing to stand in front of you so you don't have to be the front line. You don't have to be the one that they see. Let them laugh at us. Right. We used to it. We have no problem. You see, we stand out on the street right now. Right. We don't care about that. Yeah. Matter of fact, give me that 2 Corinthians 2. We understand that this message is not for everybody. We understand that for a lot of people, they're going to hear what we're saying, and it's going to sound like death. But to some people, it's going to sound like life. That's who we out here for. You, not them. Read. Uh, 2 and 16. Uh, right here. Okay. Start at verse 15. It's the book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 2 and verse 15. Read. For we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ. We are unto God a sweet Savior. Read. In them that are saved. In them that are saved. That's not everybody. Watch this. Read. And in them that perish. Uh -huh. And in them that perish, read to the to the one to the one read. We are the savior, savior of, of death. We are the to the one. We are the savior or the smell of death. They hear these words coming out. They understand that they've done this to our ancestors, and there's going to be hell to pay when our king returns. So we they, we smell like death to them. They don't want to hear this. Read. To the one, we are the savior of death. Come on. Unto death. Come on. And to the other, and the, the savior. Unto the other now, read. The savior of life unto life. The savior of life. The savior of life. Because, why are we the savior of life? Because we're showing you, Justin, that you are an Israelite, which you already know that. But now we're showing you what it means to actually be an Israelite and not just say, 
I'm an Israelite, right? You have to walk the walk, not just talk the talk. Right. So you got brothers here that's willing to help you and show you if you're willing to reach back. Give me um, Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Ecclesiastes 4 and 9. Again, I understand. I understand being alone, and that's why the Lord said it's not, it's not good to be alone. You should have others around you that can help you on your walk. And matter, uh, hold that. Give me First uh, Kings 2 and 2. Let me ask you this question. All right? Especially being in your mid-20s. I, I was there too, and I know what my mindset was. I didn't have the knowledge that you have because I was still in the world. But what does it mean to be a man according to God? What does it mean to be a man? Because this is what's lacking in our communities, right? We agree on that. In our communities, that we have no men. The grown men act like little boys. Right. All they care about is partying and getting their little penis wet. They don't care about taking care of the community. That's why all the other nations look at us and laugh. Right. So what does it mean to be a man? What? There you go. Let's get it. First Kings. Read First that. First Kings chapter 2 and verse 2. Read. I go the way of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore. Be strong, therefore. It takes a certain amount of strength to keep the commandments of God. It takes a certain amount of strength to be willing to stand up in the face of an entire society that says Halloween is tomorrow. And we say, you are the damn devil. It takes a certain amount of strength to do that. But that's what a man is supposed to be. Read. And show thyself a man. Show yourself a man. Just because you grow old doesn't mean you've grown up. Everybody grows old. Everybody does not grow up. Right. That's why our old men, 45 years old, have no idea how to show young men how to be men. That's right. All you can tell them is to get a good job and vote for Biden. That's all you can say. Read. Show thyself a man and keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Keep the charge of the Lord thy God. Read. To walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments. That's what you're standing before, men of the Lord. Right. We're not children no more. We did that. You can't have the same mindset as an 18-year-old boy and you're 35 trying to figure out how to get to the club and the party. Bring it out. At some point, you got to grow up. And that's what we are trying to show our elders. Right. Because we're the only group of people without elders that can lead. You know who our elders are? Athletes, actors, and comedians. That's who our elders are. That's who the world says our elders are because that's who they put in front of us. That's not truly our leaders because they're not leading us back to what God says it means to be a man. You following? All right. You got any questions? Give me uh, Matthew 5 and 17 just so we can be clear. Because I know you explained it. But you made that first Christianized statement. I want to make sure that we clear on that. All right? Read that. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not. This is Christ speaking. Read. Think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. Christ said, I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to do that. Read. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ did not come to destroy the law at all. So, should we, do we still have to let our beards grow? Yes, we do. Do we still have to wear fringes on our clothes? Yes, we do. Do we still have to observe the dietary law and not eat pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster? Yes, we do. Right. The only thing we don't do is sacrifice the blood of bulls and goats. We still have to obey. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. You know those. How about honor the Sabbath day? That's the fourth commandment. You know that's today then, dude, don't you? Where you was at? We didn't see you at school today. Where you was at? You know? You know you're supposed to honor the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. Congregate. You're supposed to congregate. All right. We're going to get that in a second. All right. We're going we're gonna to explain that in a second. Finish that out. Did you finish it? You what? You're going to church tomorrow. No, you didn't just say you're going to church tomorrow. Bro, you're going to Sunday church and you're an Israelite. Woo-wee. Go back. Let's, let's scroll it back. Exodus 20 and 8. No. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. This is the fourth commandment. Read. Remember the Sabbath day. And I want you to ask you, I'm going to ask you this question. The church you're going to tomorrow, are they teaching you that you're the children of Israel? No, they're not. Are they teaching that Jesus Christ is a black man and you descend from them and you are the people of God? No, they're not. Um, are they going to be observing Christmas this year? 
Yes, they are. Because all Christian churches do. Right. Are they going to be observing Thanksgiving this year? Wake them up. Yes, they are. Does the pastor have a beard or a bald head? Damn. So he's breaking these commandments. And you're going to go learn from him tomorrow. That's why you're shaking your head yes, but you're not keeping no commandments because you're still conflicted in your mind. You're double-minded still. All right? Go ahead. Read that. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And it's okay. I know where you're at. Right? You're still in that place where I'm learning this new information, but I'm so comfortable with the Christian church. So I just find any old Sunday church, and I'm going to follow them. Even though they're leading me to the pits of hell, I'm going to follow them. I know for a fact, because the brother just read the scriptures, that he's not keeping commandments, but I'm going to go learn how to love God from him. I, if you're a hypocrite, what is he? The same thing. The same thing. So why in the world would you go learn the Bible from a hypocrite? You hear how foolish that sounds? Do you hear how foolish that sounds? Finish that. Okay, no problem. Keep your question. Go ahead, read. Verse 9. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Now this is the point, Justin. It says six days shall you labor and do your work. How many days in a week? Seven, Seven days in a week. Look at a calendar. What's the first day of the week? No, nope. look at a calendar. Sunday's the first day of the week. What's the seventh day of the week? See, don't get clever. Just keep it, keep it straight. Keep it straight. If Sunday's the first day of the week, ah, uh, so what's the seventh day of the week? So what the hell are you doing going to church on the first day of the week? Right. Now we back to Jesus Christ the laws are done away with. You see how we circled all the way around? Because you know you got to keep the commandments. You was good with it until we discovered that your pastor's a liar and your church is a den of is a den of devils. God. Get, get Genesis one. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning and then get Genesis two and seven. Just the first day, just the first day, for the evening in the morning. Verse 4. Go ahead, read it. It's the book of Genesis, chapter 1 and verse 4. Read. And God saw the light, that it was good. Come on. And God divided the light from the darkness. So this is, this is the book of Genesis. This is the beginning, right? This is God. Read. And God called the light day. Come on. And the darkness he called night. Come on. And the evening and the morning were the first day. The evening and the morning. The evening and the morning were the first day. So who came up with days? Well, God came up with days. Okay. I'm talking about Sunday. Watch this. Genesis 2. No, they don't call it Sunday, Monday, Tuesday in the Bible. It was the first day of the week, second day of the week, third day of the week. And that's why we just established what was the seventh day of the week. So you work on Sunday? Yes, I would work on Sunday. But I don't, I'm, there's a disconnect here. I, I want you to follow me. We had Sabbath class today. After class, we come out on the streets to reach you. All right? So we had church today. It's not tomorrow. Right. That's not biblical. Give me Genesis 2 and 7 now. Read. This is the book of, I'll start verse 1. Go ahead. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Come on. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. On the what? On the seventh day, God ended his work. Read. Which he had made. So this is God in the creation. The seventh day he ended his work and, and creation that he had made. Read. And he rested on the seventh day and from he, all his work. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work. From all his work. From all his work. Read. Verse 3. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. It ain't rocket science, bruh. He said the seventh day, I blessed it, I sanctify it as the Sabbath day. God did it. So that's the thing you're going to realize the difference between us and the Christian church is we're not making stuff up. We're just doing what it says. That's what makes it so hard for our people to see because they've been in a Christian church so long and they've been being taught lies. So when they actually see men that are reading the scriptures and say, that's what it says to do, I'm going to do it. Now we're confused. I've never seen that before. I've never heard that before. It's not rocket science. We're just applying the fourth commandment. That's all it is. The fourth of the Ten Commandments. 
Right? Got any other questions? Uh, did we finish Matthew 5 and 17? Uh, not, not verse 18. Why do you think of it? I want to finish this because this is Jesus' words. It's very important because this is Jesus' words. Start from the top. Read. Matthew chapter 5 and verse 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. What did we just read in Exodus? What is that? The law. Christ said, I didn't come to destroy that. So we just read that the seventh day is the Sabbath day. We should still be observing it, which means going to church on Sunday is not pleasing to God. That's just something that man has come up. That is religion. That is Christianity. That is the doctrine that I said we learned in slavery. So it has nothing to do with what God said to do. It has nothing to do with that black man over there. It has everything to do with this white guy standing right here. That's why we believe Sunday is okay. Because of this man right here. Caesar Borgia. Right. And Hollywood and Leonardo da Vinci. Read. Right. Because we wear crucifixes and Jesus pieces on our chest. Some white guy that has nothing to do with our God. Jesus Christ is a black man according to the Bible. That's right. And so are his people. Right. I hope all of them were honest so far. They are. They are. Okay. Okay, are you about to tell me Jesus' color doesn't matter? Are you about to get into the color? Okay, you're beyond that one. All right. So, uh, remember the story what Jesus killed on the Sabbath? Yeah, the Pharisees and Sadducees so, tried to come against them. Um, what, is the, what is the law on? Actually, I want to know that you're breaking down. No, you don't, because you don't want to even wear fringes and you want to go to church on Sunday. You are trying to be clever. And it's okay, because we can deal with it. It's okay. You're, you're not curious about it because if you were, all the commandments that you knew you were supposed to be keeping, you would have walked up here with a beard on your face and fringes on your clothes. You wouldn't be talking about going to church on Sunday, but you want to break down Christ's healing on the Sabbath day. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.